to identify opportunities, lead a team of diverse talent, and manage business issues, creativity, and design. Think of it as the MBA for those creating products or services. We prepare you to apply design thinking in your organization. You can register now for the Saturday, May 1st virtual information session at mpd.northwestern.edu. Get registered now for the Saturday, May 1st virtual information session at mpd.northwestern.edu. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company presents... Doug. And we're back with Limu, Emu, and Doug for the final question. Category is things you climb. All right, Limu, what do you think? You sure? We're going with Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Uh, oh, so close. We were looking for stairs. Huh. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. What do you get when you talk to a Dell Technologies advisor? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You get someone who understands there's an art to listening. Uh -huh. sure. Who's able to hear more than what's being said and can provide tailored mm -hmm. small business solutions that make you feel okay. truly heard. I understand. Let's get started. For advice on everything from laptops to the cloud and solutions powered by Intel vPro platform, call an advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. Eight thirty nine, Team Hochberg Traffic Center time and Jim. On the north side, Lakeshore Drive, southbound traffic is stop and go. Wilson to before Fullerton, there was a crash. It has now cleared. The trip time, Hollywood to Monroe is 35 minutes. Northbound Marquette to Monroe, 13 minutes. Congestion from the Stevenson to Roosevelt. 8094 westbound. It's heavy. Climb to Indianapolis Boulevard due to road work. It's now 25 minutes from the toll road to the Bishop Ford Freeway. Eastbound 15. The Aidens, 20 minutes late cook to Montrose. Kennedy, 37 minutes, so hair to downtown. Quicker than the Express. Eisenhower, 56 minutes, 390 to downtown. 44 from Wolf. Stevenson, 36 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive. And the Ryan, 19 minutes, 95th to downtown. I'm Jim Calabonte on AM 560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. AM 560 Weather Center forecast. Partly sunny and warmer, windy this afternoon. I-77, 45 at O'Hare, 47 in Aurora. Your next news update is at 9. Breaking news as it happens and Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM560, The Answer. From the Matrix Home Solutions Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Listen to AM560, The Answer, online at 560theanswer.com, on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, on TuneIn, iHeart, and radio.com. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Um, our friend Barry Sterner, we've spoken with him before. You've uh, heard about his business, Thompson Financial, on our program. He is the CEO of that business. It's a small mortgage brokerage. And uh, the federal government is out for Barry Sterner. What uh, transgression did he commit uh, on his program? Uh, he, or, or somebody that was on the program with him, said uh, something that is undeniably true. It's so undeniably true, it's pedestrian. It wouldn't raise uh, the eyebrows of anybody other than somebody looking to have their eyebrows raised for the purpose of purging someone with whom they disagree. For more on exactly what has transpired, we're pleased to be joined by Barry Sterner. Barry, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Oh, Dan, thanks for having me on. So uh, you're getting the up-close and personal treatment from the federal government uh, by way of the Consumer Finance and Protection Bureau. That's Elizabeth Warren's brainchild. Uh, what has happened, and what did you allegedly do wrong? It's, it's funny that you mentioned Elizabeth Warren because uh, we had a radio show on wonderful 560 AM on Saturdays and Sundays, um, 2015, 16, 17, and 18, during the time that, you know, President Trump was talking to the nation about Chicago being a war zone. Like you said, I mean, uh, you'd have to be under a rock to not know what's been going on here. I lived 
you could call it the south side of Chicago. I live in the south loop of, of Chicago here, and as we all know, as Chicagoans, we don't like it. We don't like it, but the fact is that we've had a lot of crime here, and um, we were on 560, and we started expressing conservative political beliefs. You know, I was talking about Elizabeth Warren winning the presidency, and I would move to Canada, and some things about President uh, Obama. And lo and behold, over that time, I guess the Consumer Finance and Protection Bureau was listening to every word we said. Uh, they pulled three to five minutes of talk time on 560 when we were talking about crime on the south side of Chicago. I mean, literally, you know, we have an hour program, and um, we had some people on there. And, you know, on certain weekends when we come in, another child would be shot, there'd be you know, 20, 30 shootings over there. I don't think there were 20, 30 at that time. But, you know, a lot of bad things were going on, and we'd obviously talk about current events. Yeah, but what specifically did you say that they have I, fined you for? Oh, absolutely. And they have not fined us yet. They have filed on us in federal court. They are suing me right now, and we are trying to get it dismissed. We, we said, right, I, I was at a hockey event, and we said that a policeman... Uh, said that the only thing separating the south side of Chicago from being a war zone was the police. That was the, one of the things that we said. We also talked about my, one of my loan officers happened to mention in passing when we were talking about that, and he was joking. He said, you know, going to the south side of Chicago at 2 a.m., you know, he, he, he compared it to skydiving, that you'd have a rush. And honestly, we've been sued for those comments. We also mentioned... If anybody lived in the 90s in Chicago, yeah. you went over to the Jewel on Division and Clark. We all went over there. Everybody went there. There was no other grocery stores. And I mentioned that back in the day, it was nicknamed Jungle Jewel. And those are basically the three comments that they're trying to sue me for. I think four years ago, they asked for, you know, a, a lot of money. I don't remember the exact amount, but it wasn't, you know, a small sum. And then last uh, July, they filed on us in, in, in federal court trying to put my small Chicago business out, out of business, basically, because, you know, we, we put out our conservative beliefs. And we talked about our community. I, I live in the community. You two talk about the community all the time. We talk about the crime. And, I, you know, basically what, what they've asked us to do, and I think everybody needs to hear what they've asked us to do, they want to put in a hiring quota. They want African-Americans to be hired by Townstone Financial, regardless if they're better qualified or less qualified than anybody else that we interview. They want us basically to pull our advertising dollars off conservative radio, off 560, and move it to progressive radio. Um, they, <laughs> really? They, they they're want, in the, they the media buying it. business now. Oh, that's interesting. They're going to tell you how Absolutely. to spend your money. Okay. Uh, wow. So g government is directing your marketing spend. That's what, or they want you to submit to a direction of your marketing spend. And and I'm sorry. So the charge they're leveling against you with this federal suit they filed is some sort of discriminatory is discriminatory practice. Is that it? Well, that's the interesting part, and I will give the the government full credit on that because they used the race card to make sure that nobody wanted to touch this because, as we all know, anybody listening, you know, that if you get involved and try to help someone out that's accused on race, I, I, I was watching uh, Osborne, uh, Sharon Osborne the other night on TV. Yeah. I don't know what she said, but it sounded like nothing. So nobody wants to go near this. What they're trying to stick it together with is to change a law. There's a great law out there. It's the Equal uh, Credit Opportunity Act. And the Equal Credit Opportunity Act is very simple. That if you go apply for a mortgage, if you go apply for a car loan or anything, you should be discriminated at, uh, against. Correct? We all agree on that. So they're tying those comments together. And because we have never had a complaint in 20 years, because they went through four years of emails from us, they took our server, four years of emails, they didn't find a cartoon, they didn't find a joke. I mean, think about that. Four years of email from 2016 uh, all the way to 2020 and found absolutely nothing. They, they, they said, listen, people who were listening, who may not have ever been thinking of getting a mortgage, people who were listening, who possibly over time may have thought of getting a mortgage, were discouraged by those comments. When you told them that there was crime on the south side of Chicago, when you told them that the nickname of Jewel 
was nicknamed Jungle Jewel back in the 90s. And when you said that skydiving was, was, was related to being in the south side at 2 a.m., they decided not to apply with Townstone. So you basically discouraged all these fine Chicago people because they get their news, obviously, from the Townstone Financial Show on Sundays at, at, at 560 a.m. That's the only place that they ever heard about climbing in Chicago or that the nickname of Jewel was Jungle Jewel in the 1990s. But, 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 but just, just on, so there's, there's no evidence. They didn't present any evidence, say, you refuse to work with this uh, uh, potential client. No, they client said that there or, isn't. There, there isn't, isn't anything like that. Oh, no, they, they 100% agree that no applicant have, has ever complained about Townstone Financial, ever, never, ever. There's never been a complaint. They're trying to expand this law to non-applicants under, using us. Why did they pick us? I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, why did they pick us? We're tiny. Three people are working there. They know how much money we make because we have to put how much money we make on a federal government website. They, they didn't think we would ever fight back. They thought we'd roll over and they would set a precedent, you know, with, with this little tiny company here of, of, of three individuals. I mean, it's just crazy. And so they, yeah, no, the hiring quota and the, you know, pulling advertising dollars from conservative stations. If you guys were to do that, then would they have dropped the lawsuit? Um, uh, they, 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 they never asked us. They haven't come back. We offered to do more advertising. We put up some billboards. You know, we'd advertise in, in, in other publications. We didn't offer to take it off of where we were at. We were going to add to our advertising and go to different places. Um, the, the other thing which I think you guys will find very, very odd is they say that we do not advertise. These are MSAs. These are areas, I guess, on the south side, you, you could say. They say that we don't advertise there. Well, we advertise on your great station. We advertise on... On, on three other, well, we did on three other Chicago AM radio stations, still two. The largest AM radio stations, you know, we do 60-second ad. Your station was the only one we had an hour uh, paid programming on where we went in and answered questions. People could call in and help anybody with any questions. We had lawyers on, things like that. But where I'm getting here is they say we do not advertise to African Americans. And we're on every, and we're on the largest AM radio stations in Chicago. So... They can't have it both ways. Either we don't advertise or we do advertise. We don't reach them. We do reach them. I mean, the whole case, is, as you can see, makes no sense whatsoever. And and uh, we, we're, But just as a quick aside, the Jungle Jewel, as I understood that from back in the day, that referred didn't refer to any group in particular. It just referred to that, that the jewel there, and, and because of the neighborhood, it was like people from everywhere in the world. Absolutely. And when you walked in, you were, I don't know if you, you went there, Dan, but when you walked in, there was, this long vegetable, oh, there was this there long vegetable murders. there. I know Andy went there. Oh, I've been there. Well, we were there vegetable. covering crime, and mur- there was a woman yeah. murdered there, and then people always got robbed, and we were always there. The hot spot. I, it was just a crazy place, but when you walked in, there were people laying, the, the division street people who didn't have homes, they would lay in the vegetable, you'd have yeah. to climb over them. It was, it was very hot, it was sweaty. But listen, it's Division and Clark is in the Gold Coast. Would we would we agree on that? It was in the Gold Coast. Yeah. Rich, poor, middle of the road, street people. Everybody went there because at that time I lived in on the South Loop. There were no grocery stores around here. People don't remember that. Everybody went there. I believe the government sitting in Washington D.C. says, "Oh, oh look, Cabrini Green is uh, a mile away from that grocery store." So. That's why it was nicknamed that. Absolutely had no connotation whatsoever of racism in there. Maybe other people did. I have no idea. But when I saw that nickname, when I knew that nickname and I went there, it was just because in the winter and the summer it was a hot, sweaty place, very hard to go through. But regardless of saying that, how did that affect anybody getting a mortgage or listening to us when everyone in the whole city knew that nickname? It wasn't Barry Sterner saying that nickname. I said it was nicknamed that. I said the, another fact that there was crime in Chicago. I mean, how does that affect whether you're an applicant or a non-applicant? That, that's an, the, 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 the this case. Is, yeah, this is this insanity. Is, this is, yeah, is this is complete lunacy. Have Have you considered uh, countersuing on the basis of torturous interference in your business? 
Uh, that's an interesting one. My my fine lawyers, I'm sure, are listening here. We have not thought of that. Absolutely not. I mean, you have, you have that's well, good. you have a you have a like a sovereign immunity problem with the government agency. But the hell with that. I mean, just get in federal court and argue your case. I mean, this this is this could be Supreme Court worthy. I mean, not that you want to endure the next six years of your life taking this up to the high court, but the idea of a government agency, especially without basis, without foundation, without any. As you say, they can see there's no evidence of any discriminatory business practices, and they're going to come in and tell you where to spend your marketing dollars. I mean that 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 is astounding. I, I, I mean I, I know you agree, business, but wouldn't you be worried about this, Dan? If you were an executive in the radio business, that's why I'm thrilled that you guys got me on here. I would be worried about this, but again, you know, you're you're bringing up points and to fight these guys. We started a website. If you don't mind me saying yeah, it, it's yeah. Townstone fight. Townstone fights for freedom.com. I mean, anybody listening that wants to get this is a, you know, we haven't talked about the most important thing here, which I think we, I left out. Is this not about First Amendment rights to be able to have free speech? Everybody wants to march, everybody wants to talk. And I live in Chicago and I'm not allowed to talk about what's happening in my community. What that, that when, when I go pump gas in my car late at night over here in the South Loop, I make sure that there's a police officer on State Street there at the BP because of all the carjackings. I mean, I live there. You guys live there. You know what's happening. Um, I, I, I mean, if I can't talk about it with, with the First Amendment right, everybody's listening on your program and you two also. I mean, I'm worried about this. I've spent a long time fighting it. I need help. I need people to get to understand what's happening here. And, you know, they went on claims. They went in the Tribune and said, race, 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 race. I don't have one complaint in 20 years. How could this be about race? Yeah, We're I mean, How you're could right. Which hunt? Well, this is this is a good example. Uh, we did this uh, end of last week with, you know, don't, don't you worry less about, uh, you know, boycotting the, the, the bad actors and worry more about supporting the good actors. And we talked about that in the in the context of this uh, father and son. Uh, the, the son has Down syndrome and they started a business called um uh, what was it? John's crazy socks, I think. Um, anyway, and so, you know, let's so support the good guys. Don't so much worry about boycotting the bad guys. And so this would be a case, uh, an, another case in point uh, of what we were describing for. Give us that website again, please. It's called townstone fights for freedom.com. And obviously if anybody out there is listening, the first amendment rights, people, lawyers, things of that nature, you can always, you can always call me at, 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 at 312-896-2110. That's Tomstone financial phone number. And if you want a loan, obviously you can call us too. We take loans from everyone. I want to add one thing before we leave. There's always got to be a motive to something, right? A motive. Many of the banks back in, in the day before they had these laws didn't want a loan. In, in, in different areas that, that, that let's just say, weren't, weren't so great. Inner city areas where lending was a problem. I believe in inner city lending. You know, we'll try to lend in everyone. We have no motive whatsoever. We get paid for doing a loan. It doesn't matter, you know, if, wherever, wherever the loan happens to be, if you're white, black, purple, or green. I, I very rarely see my clients, if ever, so I don't know who they are, how they look. But in order to make money at Townstone for all the years we've been in business, we only got paid if we closed the loan. We have no motive not to do a loan for you. It just makes no sense whatsoever. Certain right. banks would say they don't want to hold that loan for 30 years in a certain area. You know, they, they, they shied away from certain areas here in Chicago. We all know that. Townstone Financial, we didn't own the loans. They, they were all sold anyway. We, we wanted to do business with everyone. We want to do business with everyone today. The whole thing just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And why they continue to spend their time and effort against our tiny company, you might ask, is because they want to set a precedent. If they were going against one, some of the big banks like you were talking about, Dan, they'd have a big fight on their hands because they'd be able to throw money at them you know, and put a stop to us. Us, they thought, hey, these guys are easy to pray. Absolutely right, and that that's and and you're, I, I know. I mean, I know that's your perspective too. The ecumenical color, green. That's that's what you're in business to 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 obtain and produce and and produce for your clients as well. This is obscene, really, just obscene. And you're right too. It's about uh, putting their boot on the little guy because it's uh, lower profile. You don't have the same capacity to fight. At least that's been historically the case, and um, and that's why they pick out the prey that they want. By the way, using 
their time and and uh, and our money, by the way, to right, also to prosecute this case. Uh, Barry Sterner is the CEO of Tonestown Financial. That uh, website again, Barry, give it to us one more time. Townstone fights with an X for freedom.com. And you can always give me a call. I'm happy to talk about this. 312-896-2110. And I want to thank you guys very much for having me on. I appreciate your time. Oh, yeah. Thank Thanks, you for, Barry. Yeah, thank you so much. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. There's only one radio show.